wait, 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 wait. I know what you're thinking, all right? But, but just give me six minutes to try and change your mind, okay? Because there's more here than you realize, all right? It's, it's unique. It's specific. It's even prophetic. It's the book of Leviticus. Hey guys, welcome to Scripture in six minutes. If you're committed to reading God's Word, we're committed to helping you understand it. Now in today's episode, we are talking about everybody's favorite book in the entire Old Testament, the book of Leviticus. All right, okay, I get it. Leviticus is that book in the Bible that most Christians just want to ignore, um, and the reason's fairly simple to understand, okay? It's focused on an ancient group of people from an ancient time with an ancient culture. And plus, it includes some strange-sounding lines of Scripture such as, You shall not sow your field with two kinds of seed, nor shall you wear a garment or a cloth made of two kinds of material. Like, immediately, we want to protest and say, Hey, God, um, most of us aren't farmers anymore, and what's wrong with a little cotton poly blend, by the way? Okay? Like, I I'll grant you this, guys. Um, reading Leviticus can be a lot like reading through our Constitution. Okay, both focus on the laws of the land and both can be a little confusing at times. But once you learn how to navigate it, you'll see that the book of Leviticus does a fantastic job shining a spotlight on Jesus who will come about 1400 years later in a manger in Bethlehem. So stick with me as we give it a whirl. Okay, let's start here. We know that Leviticus was written at Mount Sinai as the Israelites were leaving Egypt en route to the promised land. We also know that the book of Leviticus deals with the tribe of Levi, Leviticus Levi, and their priestly responsibilities. We also know that Leviticus was written by Moses, okay? In fact, more than 50 times we read the following phrase, the Lord said to Moses. Moses was writing stuff down as fast as God was talking, and God was doing a lot of talking in this book. In fact, Leviticus contains more of God's spoken words than any other book in the Bible. How about that for cool factor, okay? I mean, almost everything in this book is a decree spoken directly by God himself. But what's God talking about in Leviticus? Well, as it turns out, a lot. And a lot of it points forward to his son, Jesus. For example, in the opening chapters, God outlines the kind of um, sacrifices and offerings he expects in certain situations. Uh, but there's burnt offerings, there's, there's sin offerings, there's peace offerings, and more. And the highly specific requirements associated with these offerings, they reveal the meticulous ways that Jesus will come on the scene and satisfy his Father's demands as the sacrificial Lamb of God. And that's with a capital L. Thank you very much. Also in Leviticus, God outlines the role of priests. Now, now these men were the, the servants who cared for the tabernacle, that, that tent of meeting that we talked about back in the book of Exodus, but they're also going to be the guys who will one day care for the temple that's going to be built in Jerusalem. Okay? Now, the priests are the sons of Aaron, who's the brother of Moses, and these are supposed to be some of the, the most important spiritual leaders in the land. At least that's the game plan, right? But it's not until Jesus comes on the scene, he's revealed again 1,400 years later, that he finally shows the nation what a perfect priest actually looks like. Continuing forward, the book of Leviticus also gives us instructions for all seven feasts of Israel, the holy days that God kind of sprinkled across their calendar. Listed in chapter 23, these include the Feast of Passover, the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the Feast of First Fruits, the Feast of Weeks, the Feast of Trumpets, the Day of Atonement, and the Feast of Tabernacles. Now I promise you, we will dedicate a future video to these seven feasts because of the incredible ways that they are directly fulfilled in the ministry and life of Jesus. It's utterly amazing, okay? Now of course, the book of Leviticus also outlines super practical things like social interactions and diet and physical cleanliness and spiritual cleanliness and how to deal with leprosy and a lot more, okay? But at its core, the book of Leviticus highlights God's standard for his people. The heartbeat verse of this book comes from Leviticus chapter 19, verse 2. And in it, God says, Speak to all the congregation of the people of Israel and say to them, You shall be holy. For I, the Lord your God, am holy. Guys, for their own good, God was commanding his people to live like him. 
After all, a holy life is a blessed life, right? And beyond that, Israel's holiness would differentiate them from the, the wicked nations around them. Like their holiness would be their defining mark as God's people. Now, obviously, Christians are also called to be holy as well because Jesus, well, he repeated this exact same line in his Sermon on the Mount. Of course, this is not the only line that Jesus rips from the pages of Leviticus. Remember that whole bit about loving your neighbor as yourself? Yeah, check out Leviticus 19.18. You're welcome. But it's not just his quotations that make Jesus absolutely unmistakable in the pages of Leviticus. While reading about the expectations and the demands and the standards that God outlines for his people in the book of Leviticus, you quickly realize, like, yo, I can't do all this. At least I can't do all this all the time, okay? I can't fulfill God's standards the way he wants to because I've already messed up too many times. And that's when you realize that Jesus is not only the lawgiver, he's also the forgiver. And that, my friends, is Leviticus in a nutshell. Look, it's an important part of God's word, and for that reason alone, you should read it, okay? But our gracious God sweetens the deal even further by revealing cool details that foreshadow Jesus and his arrival. So I strongly encourage you to grab a copy of God's Word, read through the book of Leviticus, and then join us right back here for our very next episode of Scripture in Six Minutes.